Welcome to uh, second colloquium of School of Computational Science of Kias. Uh, today's speaker is uh, Dr. Aram Kim from University of Freiburg uh, in Switzerland. Uh, let me briefly introduce the Dr. Uh, Kim. Uh, he got a PhD uh, from Seoul National University in uh, 2015 and spans, uh, let's say, seven years from then in, uh, uh, in Europe, uh, uh, in Germany and England, and now in Switzerland. He's uh, recently published a very nice couple of works on the numerical many body physics. So his top title is here. It's a toward numerically exact theory on strongly coupled quantum system. Okay, let's welcome him. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I want to first. I want to thank you all for giving me a chance to talk in the computational science colloquium series. And yeah, I'm Adam Kim, and today I'm uh, yeah, and I'm from University of Fribourg. Now I am collaborating with uh, Professor Philip Berner uh, from the same university. And today I'm going to talk about the recent effort to achieve the numerically exact theory on strongly correlated systems. Uh, in strongly correlated system, by definition, there exist multiple energy scales compete with each other. Uh, one of the simplest example is the system where the kinetic energy of the individual particle uh, is compete with the interaction energy between, between particles. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> uh, this top figure shows the two limiting cases. Uh, in one limit cases where the kinetic energy of the particle dominates the system, then we can describe the system based on the single particle picture, freely moving particles. But on the other limit, where the repulsive interaction dominate the system, uh, the particle is, can be strongly localized and we can describe the system based on the local picture. But in the intermediate region where the interaction energy become comparable with the kinetic energy, there appears a non-trivial phenomena, so-called emergent phenomena. In this region, we can often encounter the critical phenomena and corresponding spontaneous symmetry breaking in the thermodynamic limit. And one can also find the new types of excitation or new types of the particle, which cannot be observed as an elementary particle in nature. And sometimes this experimental proofs, experimental response of this strongly correlated system shows very exotic behavior in finite temperature. Unconventional and high temperature superconductor is a perfect example of a strongly correlated system. This figure shows the famous phase diagram of the copper based superconductors. Experimentally, one can change the relative energy, scales, relative energy scale of the kinetic energy and the interaction energy by changing the ele electron density of the system. In the low density regime, the system can be described by the single particle picture, but in the high density regime, the system can be expressed by, be expre described based on the interact, local, interact, local picture. But in the intermediate regime, <coughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, in the intermediate regime, there appears the various uh, symmetry broken phases like the unconventional superconductor and charge density wave and spin density wave. And its finite temperature states shows also exotic behavior again. Uh, to the various experimental proofs. Howard model is a theorist platform for to describe the unconventional superconductors. Uh, it is first introduced as an effective model for copper effective model for copper based superconductor, and it resembles particularly the two D Howard model 
resemble the 2D copper oxide plane shared by the multiple material of the copper-based superconductors. And this 2D Hubbard model is seemingly very simple model, consists of, uh, composed of the only two terms, the electron hoping terms between the neighboring I and J sites with the energy scale T, and uh, uh, interaction energy between two electrons occupying the same site. And its energy scale is often denoted by uh, alphabet U. When the electron hoping energy and the local Coulomb interaction energy become comparable, then two-dimensional Hubbard model and the any-dimensional Hubbard model shows the strongly correlated behavior and the emergent phenomena in, the, in this model. I want to emphasize that the Hubbard model is very general platform, depending on how you decorate this model. For example, you can change your underlying lattice and you can change the dimensionality of the lattice. And you can even decorate this Hubbard model using the new degrees of freedom, such as the orbital. Left figure shows the energy dispersion of the iron-based superconductor. And one can find that there is a multiple contribution of the different orbitals in the low, temp low energy physics. So it is very important to deal with the uh, sort of the multi-orbital Hubbard model for the real realistic material computation. One can even decorate this Hubbard model using the explicit time dependence of the system. For example, you can implement the quantum quench of the interaction and study the physics of the non-equilibrium dynamics. Recently, the Hubbard model is not only the theorist platform, but it is also the experimentalist interacting system in the laboratory. The recent advance of the ultra cold atom experiment on the optical lattice give us, uh, enable us to implement the Hubbard model uh, in the laboratory. And it gives a really fine control over the model parameters at low temperature. Left figure, this figure shows a nice illustration of the experimental setup of the ultra cold atom experiment. And you can see there is a 2D Hubbard model implemented in the experiment. It already shows the anti-ferromagnetic, strong anti-ferromagnetic correlations of the system. And it shows, it also shows the temperature linear resistivity experimental uh, observation, which can be directly compared with the computational result. But problem is the Hubbard model is extremely difficult to solve. Uh, there, of course, there is no analytic solution even in the purest form without any decoration for the most relevant two dimension. And unfortunately, the <clears throat> non-trivial emergent phenomena appears in the strongly correlated region where the kinetic energy and the interaction energy are comparable. So by definition, there is no small parameter for perturbation theory. On the other hand, if we want to approach uh, uh, if we want to take the computational approach to solve this Hubbard model in a brute force way, we will encounter the so-called exponential computational barrier due to the exponentially large size of the Hilbert space as we increase the system size. So what is the status of two uh, in solving the Hubbard model? The recent trend of solving this Hubbard model uh, take the approach, so-called multi-method approach. In this framework, people collect the, as many as possible state-of-art algorithms in single, in, a, in, in single model and restricted parameter set and compare their result uh, of the many quantum manifest algorithms. Then you can discriminate what is the, share, quant what is the quantitatively reliable physics you can see in the Hubbard model and what is the artifact or deficiency of a certain algorithm. But this kind of multi-method approach requires a lot of resources. It requires a lot of computational resources. It requires a lot of human resources. 
So in order to carry out this kind of multi-method approach, we need a large scale collaboration. And this is the why this kind of study is also called as a multi-messenger approach. And there is an ongoing international collaboration funded by Simon's Foundation to carry out this kind of multi-messenger, multi-method approach. In our recent publication, we study the effect of the quantum fluctuation in the two-dimensional Hubbard model <coughs> using various methods, various quantum many-body algorithms. And today's talk is about the numerically exact quantum many-body method, which can be used as a benchmark result of this current uh, multi-method approach. Before I dive into the quantum Monte Carlo method, uh, let me start from the classical Monte Carlo approach. The essence of the Monte Carlo approach is in its efficiency in doing multidimensional sum or integral. But as a cost of this efficiency, we need to deal with the cost of stochastic, we need to deal with the stochastical error. Uh, as, you, as you may know well, the typical example of the classical Monte Carlo approach, uh, application is the classical easing model in two dimension. In order to solve the two dimensional easing model, we need to calculate the partition function, uh, which is the sum of the Boltzmann factor over the all possible easing spin configuration. But if we want to <coughs> access the large enough system to see the result of the thermodynamic limit, we need to deal with the exponentially large number of the spin configuration. Since there is a spin up and down for a given lattice site, there will be two to the n different spin configuration for n lattice sites. For example, for 10 by 10 lattice, there is a two to the 100 spin configuration, which is a 10 to the 30. Then this number is practically impossible number to sum in a brute force way. It takes more than 400,000 years, even using the fastest supercomputer on Earth. But the beauty of the Monte Carlo approach is that we can transform this impossible task into uh, homework for an undergraduate student. In the Monte Carlo approach, we stochastically sample this easing configuration based on its importance. And its importance in this case is determined by the size of the Boltzmann weight. So by summing over the most relevant and most important spin configuration first, we can achieve much more fast, but much faster convergence compared to the brute force calculation. And as a cost of this efficiency, we are suffering from the error bar. But I want to say that this error bar is also mathematically well-defined quantity as a standard deviation. This Monte Carlo approach has a really wide application in general research field. For example, one can, one can globally optimize the traveling schedule of the KBO baseball team. And you can even train the neural network using the big data generated by the Monte Carlo sampling. But what I want to discuss today is about the quantum Monte Carlo method for the quantum correlated system. In order to um, sort of the quantum correlated system, we need a new uh, theoretical framework, which is the pass integral. In this framework, the partition function uh, can be written as a trace of the density matrix. And this part, this form can be also expressed as a time evolution of the quantum many body state. After expanding this time evolution operator, one can write the partition function as a sum of the quantum trajectories. And the graphical way of representing this quantum trajectory is the Feynman diagram. Those figures shows the example of the low order Feynman diagrams. And this blue dot corresponds to the, in, corresponds to the interaction between particles and this black line corresponds to the propagation of the particle. Quantum Monte Carlo method uh, is based on the probabilistic interpretation of this quantum Monte Carlo method. And then we can apply the classical Monte Carlo method, which is exactly the same with the one used in the easing model. 
and we can, but we now sample the quantum trajectory, which includes the dynamics of the quantum state along the time. Uh, I want to comment about this character of this type of partition function based quantum on the fellow method. This method is for the finite system. And since we are interested in the thermodynamic limit reserve of the quantum strongly correlated system, we need to access the high enough, large enough system size uh, using the efficient Monte Carlo method. And then we need to extrapolate to the infinite system size limit. And that's the way we use the quantum Monte Carlo, this kind of quantum Monte Carlo method. And there is a famous example from the early year of the quantum Monte Carlo history, so called determinant quantum Monte Carlo, uh, called BSS algorithm and continuous time interaction expansion and diagrammatic determinant Monte Carlo method, and so on. But this is not the end of the story, and this partition function based quantum Monte Carlo method cannot, cannot solve the all kinds of strongly correlated system. The main obstacle of this type of quantum Monte Carlo is the notorious sign problem. Uh, I comment that in the quantum Monte Carlo method, the partition function is the sum of the quantum trajectory. But in quantum mechanics, this quantum trajectory can be negative and it can be even complex in some times. For example, in the presence of the negative uh, quantum trajectory, we cannot apply the probabilistic interpretation to this quantum trajectory. We need a little trick to sample this case. So we need to introduce the new sign variable and express the quantum trajectory as a multiplication of the average sign times the modulus of the quantum trajectory. Now we can apply the probabilistic interpretation of this modulus of the quantum trajectory. But in this case, we need to sample some kind of physical quantity as a ratio of the between two quantities. So one is the A times the sign average. And uh, in the denominator, we need to sample the average sign by the Monte Carlo method. The famous sign problem refers to the phenomena in which the average sign becomes the exponentially small. And as you can see, this average sign is located in the denominator. This exponentially small average sign give us the exponentially small signal to noise ratio and completely ruin the quality of the uh, quantum Monte Carlo sample. And this prevents the access toward the larger system size. So it is getting more and more difficult to access the access or the extrapolate to a thermodynamic limit. Those figures shows the decrease of the average sign as we decrease temperatures. And you can, you can check that actually the average sign decrease is exponential as a function of inverse temperature. The sign problem in the quantum Monte Carlo is very general and widely observed phenomenon. It's, and it is also a very subtle problem because it strongly depends on the quantum anybody basis you choose or the Hamilton type of the Hamiltonian and the parameter regime of the Hamiltonian. It even depends on how you design the Monte Carlo updates or Monte Carlo sampling. And dynamical mean field theory and its extension give us a circumvent way, circumventing way against the sign problem. It introduced the so-called, some kind of approximation, so-called local approximation to alleviate the sign problem. So it make we it give us enlarged accessibility to more complicated system. For example, in in my publication, we can access the three orbital Hubbard model with the spin orbit coupling strings for general doping and the general interaction strings. And I I could even it is it was even possible to optimize a quantum many body state, local quantum many body state basis to re uh, alleviate the sign problem. But since it contains the approximation, in order to get the numerically exact theory, we need to extend this di dynamical mean field theory. We need to extend the way to extend 
this dynamical mean field theory can be classified into the two. The one is the cluster extension, the other is the diagrammatic, diagrammatic extension. But it, those extensions also still have uh, uh, effect of the local approximation. But I think it is fair to say it is not a complete solution against the sign problem. And recently highlighted the diagram in Monte Carlo give us an aggressively different approach against the sign problem. It is first introduced by my collaborator, Nikolai and Boyce in 1998. And it attacked the sign problem in the following way. As I commented to you before, the evil of the sign problem is in the vision. Suppose there is an older one, physical quantity A, then we need to sample various two very small, exponentially small quantities and need to take the ratio between those two. And this ruined the quality of the quantum Monte Carlo. So in this point, we can ask a natural question, like instead of computing two poorly sampled quantities separately, can we directly sample the already divided by divided quantity by Monte Carlo? The answer is yes, and the corresponding already divided quantity correspond to the connected Feynman diagram. The partition function, which is used as a, a quantum trajectory for the conventional quantum Monte Carlo, consists of the connected and disconnected Feynman diagrams. But suppose, uh, but if we want to sample the, for example, Green's function, then we can express this Green's function as a ratio between two disconnect, two disconnected diagrams, um, but leading to the complete cancellation of the disconnected part. And the result, uh, resulting diagrammatics only contains the connected Feynman diagrams. And the diagrammatic Monte Carlo method directly sample this connected Feynman diagram. And this simple difference make a huge change in the performance and the behavior of the algorithm. One of the surprising phenomena is the fermionic sign blessing. This phenomena refers the massive cancellation between the different diagram for a given diagram order. And this kind of massive sign cancellation is, uh, is a power to make the diagrammatic series convergent. Uh, I would say it is very surprising phenomena if you consider the number of Feynman diagrams uh, in, the, in the high order diagram, uh, Feynman diagrams. As you increase the diagram order, the number of Feynman diagram for a given diagram order increases factorial. But in large parameter region, we can get the convert uh, exponentially fast convergence of the diagrammatic series. And this is the underlying or uh, the fermionic sign blessing is underlying, un underlying phenomena for the success of the diagrammatic series. If you remind the alternating sign completely ruined the signal to noise ratio of the conventional quantum Monte Carlo method, um, it is quite interesting to see that this alternating sign could be actually helpful phenomena to make the di diagrammatic series convergent. And it also have a very interesting phenomena uh, or the behavior due to the connective nature of the Feynman diagram. In the connected Feynman diagram, there is own length scale due to the decay of the uh, decay of the propagator of the Feynman diagrams. So if we have a numerical playground, which is just a larger than this length scale of the connected diagram, we are not suffering from the finite size effect. Well, you can see the difference uh, in the disconnected diagram because there is no connection between some diagrams, the disconnected diagram spend the whole system size. So, if we can get the high enough diagram orders using the efficient Monte Carlo, and we can extrapolate to the infinite diagram order, then we can actually get the numerically exact result without suffering any approximation. This right figure 
shows the typical behavior of the convergent diagrammatic series. You can see there is no clear signature of the convergence in the low diagram order, but in high diagram order, you can see the asymptotically con converging uh, series toward the exact result in this simple model. The diagrammatic Monte Carlo also give us some new point of view on Feynman diagrams. Uh, historically or uh, traditionally, the Feynman diagram give, has been used to compute a few perturbative correction for physical quantities. But if we can access the high enough diagram orders uh, using the diagrammatic Monte Carlo, we can get an idea of the entire series representation of the observable A instead of a few perturbative correction. In here, high enough order means uh, diagram order where we can observe the asymptotic convergent or divergent behavior. This entire series representation gives us a much more fruitful and richer information uh, compared to the a few perturbative correction. So instead of saying naively saying that the expansion is perturbative expansion is valid when the expansion parameter is small. Now we can say that up to which number this expansion is valid and beyond which number this expansion is not valid. So recently we have observed very non-trivial problem of the breakdown of the diagrammatics to actually in that rigorously uh, investigate the diagrammatic series. And by accessing the high order diagrams, we can locate the singularity structure of the observables. Uh, this singularity can be related to the physical phenomena, such as a critical phenomena. And my recent publication, I estimate the transition point of the 3D Hubbard model. And in case of the convergence, in case of the guaranteed convergence, we can now precisely estimate the physical quantity within the control data bar. Then what can we do for the divergent series? This is the next question. In my recent publication, I have shown, suggested the generic pathway toward the convergence diagrammatic series. The main message I want to convey is that even in the diagrammatic se divergent series, the high order series coefficient contains the rich information to extract the meaningful result. The problem of series convergence and divergence is all about the singularity. Uh, suppose we have a physical quantity A in the power series of the psi. And let's say we want to compute this A value at psi equal one. Then what we need to investigate is a singularity structure of the complex psi plane. Now, uh, if one had, if there is no singularity within the unit circle, including this cycle one physical point, then series is convergent. But if there is a singularity within this unit circle, the series become divergent. But if we know the high order that co diagrammatic coefficient, uh, we can locate the singularity, for example, using the ratio test of the series. There have, been, there have been various resummation tricks from famous mathematicians to get the convergent result out of divergent series. One of the example is a very conformal transformation. It is simply just the variable transformation from, of the expansion parameter psi into the new expansion parameter omega. And in this new expansion parameter uh, variable omega, the series can be convergent, even if the series on the side plane is still divergent. Um, you can see the unit circle of the omega plane is translated into the distorted closed pass in the original side plane. So by engineering this distortion, we can push away certain singularity in the radius of the convergence uh, away from the origin. This right figure shows the procedure how we obtain the reliable result out of the di divergent series. From this red violently divergent series, we can apply the conformal transformation 
and we can get the con convergence series out of it. And then we can trans translate, uh, extrapolate into the infinite order limit, and we can get the exact wizard in this benchmark model. What we have done in my re recent publication is we implement this conformal transformation at the level of the action. And we call this that new action as some homotopic action. And this new action is now the action is represented by the function of the new expansion parameter omega. And the, or for a given order of given that given order of the omega, the original Feynman diagram of different orders are mixed into the new configuration, Monte Carlo configuration. And this kind of simple modification gave us a huge efficiency gain of the Monte Carlo sample. You can see the more than 20 times efficiency gain in the high diagram orders. And using this homotopic action, we can actually achieve the polynomial time algorithm as a function of inverse um, systematic error. It is very favorable behavior of the compute computational method, this polynomial time behavior. The important question about the success of this homotopy action is why we can get such kind of huge efficiency gain. The simple answer of this question is the advanced sign blessing. I comment about the sign blessing uh, and the sign blessing refers to the massive cancellation of the Feynman diagram for a given order. But now we want, I want to talk about the massive cancellation of Feynman diagram between different diagram orders. You can see there in the original, the original divergence series, there is a opposite contributions of different diagrams order. And this cancellation of this oscillation finally leads us to the convergent, convergent wizard. But if we sample the each that uh, each series coefficient separately using Monte Carlo, the Monte Carlo error doesn't cancel out, but accumulate. We want to now enforce the cancellation of this uh, oscillating contribution at the level of the action. Now in, now in my homotopic action, we mix the di Feynman diagrams of the different order into the one, and we enforce the cancellation of this oscillating contribution. This is the underlying mechanism uh, of the huge efficiency gain of the homotopic action. The next question is, how do we mix this uh, diagrams from the different diagram orders? The singularity location and the designed conformal transformation give us the natural guideline how to mix the Feynman diagrams of different diagram orders. Uh, using the diagrammatic Monte Carlo I developed, uh, I, I implemented, uh, we study the physics of the 2D Hubbard model and possible relation to the phenomenology of the high TC superconductors. The first question I want to answer is if the 2D Hubbard model captured the pseudo gap state of the high TC superconductors. Uh, the pseudo gap state is the finite temperature state located here, when the antiferromagnetic correlation is suppressed by the density suppression. In this pseudo gap state, the Fermi surface of the non interrupting system is suppressed in certain momentum point. Uh, this square shows the quadrant of the whole Brillouin zone, and you can see the remaining arc shape density of state in the system. Uh, and we call this arc shape density of state as a Fermi arc. And when you integrate over the whole brutal long zone, due to the suppressed density of state in certain momentum point, you can find the dip or the pseudo gap like behavior in the integrated density of the state. And I want to emphasize that this pseudo gap state is a many, quantum many body state, which cannot be described by the weakly interacting electrons. Uh, yeah, uh, if I answer the question first, then to, to, to the Hubbard model 
indeed shows the phenomenology of the pseudogap behavior, even at the half belly. The results I will show are based on the three different publications listed here. And in the first paper, we show that there is a strong anisotropy of the scattering rate of the electrons in the momentum space in the Brillouin zone. And in the second paper, using the experimentally measurable spin and charge correlation function, we draw the numerically exact phase diagram for the two-dimensional Hubbard model at half valley. And in the last publication, I extend the scope of the study to the charge doped case, charge doped case. And uh, we investigate if we can mimic the phenomenology of the high TC superconductors. Uh, let me give you an overview of the physics in two-dimensional Hubbard model at the half valley. Uh, this is the phase diagram of the two-dimensional Hubbard model at half valley as a function of interaction strengths uh, and the y-axis correspond to the temperature. And there is a finite temperature metal to insulator crossover in finite temperature. But this is the result of the subtle tension between two competing mechanisms. First one is the first Fermi surface nesting. You can see there is a red line, which is the Fermi surface in the Brillouin zone. And there is a nest uh, momentum transfer vector, which connect the, uh, a single Fermi surface point to another. And this nesting of this transfer momentum vector give us an antiferromagnetic order state at zero temperature for any finite interaction strengths U. But the famous Murnbachner theorem prohibit the true long range order uh, in finite temperature. So this antiferromagnetic insulator is actually quasi antiferromagnetic insulator. And in this region, there is a exponentially decreasing spin correlations satisfying the Murnbachner theorem, but the correlation length itself increase exponentially toward the uh, zero temperature order state. Major quantitative finding of ours is, the, is that there are two different energy scales. There is a charge energy scale shown by this red symbol here, and there is a spin energy scale shown by blue symbols. And there is a clear separation of two different energy scale. And in the intermediate region, you can find, <clears throat> you can find the non-fermi liquid behavior. In this non fermi liquid regime, the charge degrees of freedom already uh, behave like the insulator, but the spin degrees of freedom still behave like the metal. And deep in this regime, uh, there is a pseudogap pseudo phenomenology we can find. This figure shows the metalness with the red, red area and the insulatingness in this uh, blue regime. You can see there is a strong scattering of the electrons in this momentum point, and there is a still remaining metalness of the electrons in this momentum point. And it resembles the Fermi arc behavior of the high TC superconductors. In our next study, we expand our study into the charge doped case with the density away from uh, unity. I want to emphasize that this doped case of the 2D Howard model is the battleground for various quantum antibody methods. And many of them are suffering from the sign problem and or the finite size effect. But the dia diagrammatic Monte Carlo actually behaves better away from the half -film. As a measure of the physics, uh, we choose the entropy, thermal entropy landscape uh, because it can be directly related to the thermodynamic quantities by a Maxwell relation. And one of the Maxwell relation may uh, give us a connection between the entropy landscape, I mean, the inflection point of the entropy and the boundary of the non fermi liquid. This black boundary corresponds to the boundary of the non fermi liquid. And you can see there is a dome-like shape centered at the half valley. And after drawing the another boundary, 
of the other side of the uh, non-formulaic regime, we can find the band of the non-formulaic regime. And as a function of uh, electron density, we can see this doping ratio of the non-formulaic regime is qualitatively consistent with the experimental finding of the high temperature superconductors. And if you follow the maximum of the entropy, you can see there is a bifurcation of the maximum of the entropy. This white line shows the uh, maximum of the entropy. And you can see that there is this maximum of the entropy is more or less located near the high uh, doping level of the highest trans superconducting transition point. And we expect this huge uh, thermodynamic entropy can give us a fertile ground for various symmetry broken bases at the low temperature. Uh, finally, let me comment about my ongoing and future research. Uh, research. I'm now working on devising new generation diagrammatic Monte Carlo method. Now, uh, despite the huge success of the current diagrammatic Monte Carlo method, there is a clear limitation of the current version. If we want to study the physics of the really strong coupling regime or the really low temperature regime, it is getting more and more difficult to make the series converging. So in order to overcome this kind, this limitation, I'm now devising two different kinds of algorithms. One is the strong coupling expansion based diagrammatic Monte Carlo algorithm for the strong coupling regime and the symmetry restoring expansion for the low temperature regime. And I expect this kind of new generation diagrammatic Monte Carlo will be complemented, compl complementary for the existing algorithm. And I want to complete the remaining phase diagram of the 2D Hubbard model. Uh, under the strong coupling expansion, uh, we, uh, instead of the taking reference point as a non-interacting system, we are now taking the infinite interaction strength limit as a reference point. Then for the strongly coupled, uh, strong coupling region, we can take much shorter paths than the expansion paths of the previous algorithm. But problem of this strong coupling expansion is that we cannot apply the Feynman diagrammatics directly because the reference point is already interacting system. So in this case, we need to introduce so-called pseudoparticle formalism. And in this formalism, electron operator is written as a multiplication of the two pseudoparticle uh, operators. And then we can apply the conventional Feynman diagrams to the pseudoparticle operators. But the uh, Hilbert space of the pseudoparticle operator is much larger than the physical Hilbert space, we need to project onto, into the physical Hilbert space at the end of the day. And we can implement this kind of projection at the level of the Feynman diagram. And we can apply the efficient Monte Carlo sampling method to sample this pseudoparticle Feynman diagrams. I have already implemented the, this strong coupling expansion diagram at the Monte Carlo method for the quantum impurity model. And it can be used as a solver for the dynamical mean field theory. Another direction of the new, the new generation diagram at Monte Carlo is based on the symmetry restoring expansion. Uh, as I commented to you before, the physics of the half field Hubbard model, for example, is strongly affected by the anti ferromagnetic correlation. And there, there is a crossover due to this antiferromagnetic correlations. And this crossover manifests itself as a singularity near the physical axis. And this singularities prevent us to reach a large enough interaction strength in low temperatures. So this is the current limitation of the diagram at Monte Carlo method. In order to overcome this current limitation, we introduce the new symmetry breaking term in the homotopic action. Uh, inspired by the dominant antiferromagnetic correlation, we now apply the staggered magnetic field 
to make the reference system antiferromagnetically ordered. But in order to recover the original Hamiltonian, we need the counterturn to cancel out the cancel out this staggered magnetic field, and we need to expand uh, about expand uh, using the interaction term and this counterturn. And when we fully expand this series up to cycle one, now we can recover the original system with the uh, significantly modified reference system. I have already uh, observed that this kind of aggressive modification of the reference system give us a significant improvement in terms of the series convergence. And I'm preparing publication in this year. Uh, um, I want to comment about the general, uh, how, uh, how versatile this kind of uh, Symmetry restoring expansion is. We can apply all kinds of different symmetry breaking field to the system. For example, you can apply the various uh, superconducting uh, symmetry breaking field with a different uh, superconducting gap symmetry. And you can also apply the symmetry breaking field for the charge density wave and spin density wave. Uh, finally, if I comment about my future research, long-term future research work, uh, plan. I'm planning to apply the diagrammatic Monte Carlo method to the non-equilibrium quantum magnetic system. In spite of the recent experimental advances, particularly in the ultra cold atom and the pump probe method for the correlated system, uh, we are still suffering from the lack of reliable computational approaches. Simp it's because simply it is a much more difficult problem because we now have uh, additional explicit time dependence of the Hamiltonian on top of the already difficult uh, quantum antibody system at the equilibrium. Particularly the non-equilibrium two-dimensional system is not, not, it's very unexplored. And I want to apply this newly developed the strong, couple, strong coupling diagram in Monte Carlo to this non-equilibrium quantum antibody system. In order to achieve this goal, we need a new time axis incorporating the non-equilibrium system. And we need this distorted time axis is called Kalish contour, composed of the forward and backward real time axis and the imaginary time axis to prepare the initial equilibrium state. I expect the sign blessing phenomena of the diagrammatic Monte Carlo method can give us access to the long time behavior of the non-equilibrium system to study the physics of the various time scale of the quantum antibody system. Uh, this is the summary and outlook of my talk. And I want to emphasize that the diagrammatic Monte Carlo is a powerful tool uh, that can circumvent the sign problem and it can access the thermodynamic limit directly. And when the diag diagrammatic series conver is convergent, we can get the controlled measure uh, for the long-standing problems of the strongly correlated materials. And we already found the power of the diagrammatic diagrammatic Monte Carlo method in the 2D Hubbard mode. We have shown that there is a transi transi transitional non fermi liquid in the intermediate interaction regime in and away the half filling. And this behavior mimics the pseudo gap behavior of the high temperature superconductors. And now I'm working on devising the new generation diagrammatic Monte Carlo algorithm based on the strong coupling expansion and the symmetry restoring expansion. And in the long term, I want to apply this kind of method to the non-equilibrium quantum antibody system. And this is the list of my in, list of institute I have been collaborating. And thank you for your attention. OK. So thank you for a very nice talk and very interesting subject. Uh, it's really uh, progress, a lot of progress. So now, uh, 
question and comments from the audience. So if you have a question, please turn on your microphone or camera, or if you cannot do that, please write your question on chatting. Uh, then I will repeat it. Okay. Uh, while waiting for the uh, kind of, uh, while waiting for the questions, uh, let me start from my own. So you told us that the kind of pseudo particle doublet exp uh, expansion for the strongly coupled uh, mm -hmm. diagrammatic uh, quantum Monte Carlo expansion. Yeah. I just wonder that the, are there any other problem arising from that kind of uh, decomposition or pseudo particle approximation? And what kind of experimental situation are you uh, aiming at? Uh, experiment, uh, okay. So let me try to, uh, let me try to answer the first question first. I mean, uh, the reason why we cannot apply the conventional Feynman diagram is that there, since there is no weak theorem in the strong coupling expansion. But if we, uh, if we introduce the pseudo particle framework, then the interacting part of the Hamiltonian become the bilinear and the non-interacting part become a quartector. Now, in terms of the pseudo particle, but I mean, pseudo particle is defined for a given local state, given local state of the Hamiltonian. For example, for the empty state of the Hubbard model, uh, we introduce the bosonic, so bosonic pseudo particle. And for the singly occupied state, we introduce the fermionic pseudo particle. And as you can expect, the, for the bosonic case, uh, we can imagine the you can imagine of the multiple bosonic states, like the double, I mean, two empty states, states like the state like behavior. So, so for example, for an empty state, we need we only need to have the single empty pseudo particle in the system, but the Hilbert space itself can possess the multiple empty uh, pseudo particles for the empty state. So there is a enlarged Hilbert space of the Hilbert enlarged Hilbert space of the system. So we need to get rid of it, and there is uh, many. There is several trick to get rid of this kind of uh, enlarged Hilbert space, unphysical Hilbert space. One can introduce the imaginary part of the chemical potential, and you can extrapolate at the end, at the end of the day by introducing some kind of new, uh, new chemical potential to get rid of this unphysical Hilbert space. But one of the uh, efficient numerical way is to implement this kind of change the Feynman diagram metrics to get rid of the unphysical uh, Hilbert space. That's the reason why I call this diagram metrics as a constrained Feynman diagram diagrams for the pseudo particle. And if I comment about the structure of the Feynman diagram, in this case, is that there should be one backbone without any bubbles of the Feynman diagrams. So that's kind of tricky problems to deal with the pseudo particle Feynman diagrams, but yeah, we, we need to deal with such kind of subtle problems in this strong coupling expansions. And my uh, second yeah. question, yeah. Yeah, your second question is, uh, second question is about the physical system I'm mm. interested in using this strong coupling expansion. Mm. So first one I want to, first one I want to, try to apply this algorithm is the non uh, is the impurity model uh, with the impurity model in the strong coupling regime. So I want to apply this strong coupling uh, expansion algorithm as an impurity solver of the DMFT for the non-equilibrium system. And as a, just the next, next step, and I want to describe the Transitional, uh, transitional superconductivity only can be observed in the non-equilibrium system. That's my short-term yeah. future research goal. Okay. Yeah. Oh, 
Any other questions and comments? Uh, I have a question. And, okay, good. Uh, thank you for your nice talk. Uh, it was really uh, good. Uh, I just want to uh, know a bit more about uh, design problems. So uh, you mentioned that the uh, diagrammatic uh, Monte Carlo can um, circumvent this design problem by canceling mm -hmm. the sum of the Feynman diagram. And mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to ask, is it uh, all, always possible to remove all the design problem or is it sometimes possible? Uh, is there any limitation of this approach? Or Mm -hmm. uh, yes, let, let me describe in a more accurate way how the diagrammatic Monte Carlo deal with the sign problem. Uh, so the, there is the always sign problem in, in the for, uh, sign problem for the conventional quantum Monte Carlo or the diagrammatic Monte Carlo. But the way the algorithm behave against this sign problem is a bit different. So uh, so in the presence of this uh, oscillating sign, the conventional Monte Carlo just suffering from this sign oscillation, but the diagrammatic Monte Carlo be sometimes behave better in the presence of the sign problem. So it can access. It. So sometimes the sometimes this sign problem is helpful to study the, some parameter regime of the Hamiltonian, but but the, but I mean, so basically the diagrammatic Monte Carlo are not suffering from the sign problem much. It can endure it, but the, its main limitation is not the sign problem, but the uh, series convergence problem. So, I mean, so if before we experience the problem of the sign, uh, problem originating from the sign problem, we experience another problem first. For example, we can, we can encounter the divergence series we cannot deal with first. So in that case, we don't need to care about the sign problem, but we have a different problem to have a successful application of the diagram of the Monte Carlo method. So, uh, so what, in summary, what I want to say is that diagram of Monte Carlo can endure the sign problem, but it has uh, another problem to deal with it. So yeah, that's, I think, the current situation of the diagram of Monte Carlo. Okay, thank you so much. So then can, can I understand this uh, di a diagrammatic uh, Monte Carlo is one way to solve the sign, um, uh, uh, circumvent the sign problem uh, in some different ways, like, um, it has some or own problem, but it could be yeah. uh, efficient for some cases. So, yes, yeah. yes. So yeah, so particularly could be efficient where the severe sign problem appears because it does not, it, it's not severely suffering from the sign problem. So it has a uh, hope to get some uh, successful result for this region. Okay, I see. So yeah, I think that the, another related question is that there are some beliefs that this sign problem is a really a big problem in the many body physics and it wouldn't be able to solve all the sign problem entirely using the classical machines, right? So um, is, uh, do you have any opinion on this um, a prospect on this sign problem? Is do you think it to be it could be handled um, in some other ways or um, yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I missed uh, your first sentence about the. Uh, so, uh, yeah, sometimes it's, it is say that the sign problem uh, wouldn't be able to solve by classical uh, methods like classical computers. So, mm -hmm. um, do you think it, it is possible to uh, solve the sign problem eventually in some uh, far future, or do you think it is totally impossible to handle this sign problem in many body physics? Mm. I, I would say this, uh, thanks for a very yeah, deep question. And I would, mm, I would say, I would say, I would say, I think it is really difficult to solve in a general way to solve this sign problem. So computationally it is, it is I think it's, uh, 
So there have been successful example to solve the sign problem in some cases. So for example, people, and there exists, or there exists the perfect way to solve this sign problem by diagonalizing the system. So if you know the eigenstate of the finite system, then in principle, you can, you just solve the sign problem as well. So it fundamentally can be solved, but, and uh, sometimes uh, nice insight using the nice insights. So some people find a really nice basis to make the sign, to make the sign problem free algorithm using the conventional quantum Monte Carlo. So I think it is possible for the certain cases, but I think it, I still think it is really difficult problem to solve in a general way in the, in the general fermionic system. I think it is difficult, practically difficult. Yeah. So the quantum computer can solve it? <laughs> yes. I don't know. Uh, let's let's hope. It. <laughs> uh, thank you very for uh, uh, thank you yeah. very much for your answer. Uh, it helps a lot. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thanks. Yeah. Any other question or comment, please? Oh, uh, I have a question. Yes. Sure. Uh, is this two D model you can uh, by uh, solving sign problem you can approach the superconducting page of low temperature? Is possible? And second question is that is pseudo-gap behavior is due to the anti parametric correlation only, or there is another mechanism for that? Uh, okay, yeah, thanks for a very nice question. Uh, so, yeah, first question is really interesting question. I mean, it's about the, it's about the point, if we can go beyond the phase transition using the diagrammatic series. The answer is no. I mean, if we answer is no, we cannot go beyond the phase transition from the one side. But there is a recent public. Uh, there was a recent publication about about the way we can access the symmetry broken phases. So instead of starting from the symmetry symmetry cases, we can start our expansion from the symmetry broken cases. For example, in the 3D Hubbard model of the attractive, of attractive interaction, there is, a, there is a superconducting phase in the low temperature. And uh, as I describe in this, uh, this slide, we can, we can modify our re reference system by applying the superconducting field. So we can start from the superconducting state and from some superconducting state, we can expand our series. And it has been shown that we can access the actual superconducting state by taking this different expansion route from the, for example, zero temperature. So you use the uh, number formalism in the cluster, right? Sorry, would you say that again? You use number formalism in the cluster. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. I, I, no, I, I'm not the one who did my this study, but I mean, this second, this paper in here oh, I see. in archive used the number four. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Yeah. And your second question is about the pseudo gap, right? I mean. Oh yes, uh, is uh, solely from the anti ferromagnetic correlation or another uh, mechanism? I think it's not fair to fair to say it is solely from the anti ferromagnetic fluctuations, but there is a quantitative analysis about the origin of the pseudo gap. Uh, it is. It has been, it has used the uh, so-called fluctuation diagnostics uh, by decomposing the self-energy into the various uh, vertex function of different channels. For example, you can, you can draw the histogram uh, of the char char charge channel vertex or spin channel vertex and superconducting vertex or something like that. And, uh, Consist, uh, consensus between the model study is that the uh, most significant contribution of the self-energy in pseudo gap is coming from the anti ferromagnetic fluctuations. So that's kind of consensus in the model study. But I mean, you need to be quantitative to uh, quantitative to say that it is alternate the. Yeah, anti ferromagnetic correlation is up to some portion uh, some uh, responsible for the pseudo gap state. I, we need to say something like that, but I mean, I want to say the anti ferromagnetic correlation is main contribution 
for the physics of the pseudo, at least in the Hubbard model. Yeah, that's my answer. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Okay, thank you very much for very nice question and very nice answers. Okay, so any other question or comment, please? Uh, so uh, one thing I'm, I wonder is that you mentioned that you, you cannot go uh, below the page transition temperature using the diagrammatic quantum Monte Carlo, but if there's no page transition, you don't have any difficulty to go down to the low temperature in your quantum Monte Carlo. Uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for a very interesting question. Uh, in principle, yes. In principle, mm -hmm. yes, but that that does not say it is practically possible. So if there is no phase transition, then the singularity is not in the physical axis. So if we have a God's machine to generate the infinite number of the series, then we can go really far. Mm -hmm. but, the, but if there is a singularity really near the physical axis, then it's practically it's getting more and more difficult to go beyond the singularity point. So if there is a, if there is a singularity uh, responsible for, for example, crossover, then that means uh, fit, that means that there is some physical implication of this singularities really close to the physical axis. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's become inefficient and impractical to go beyond this point. So in this case, it's better to take other other path of the expansion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. So. Many people from department uh, school of physics. So, the, do you have any question from physics department? No. Okay. So, if there is no more question and comments uh, from the audience, uh, let's thank the speaker, Dr. Aram Kim, again. Thank you very much, very much for your uh, wonderful talk. Okay. Thank okay. You very it's much. very early, still very early <laughs> in this <laughs> <land. laughs> no my day. So, uh, thank you, thank you again for giving me a chance to talk in here. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for all the attending the class, uh, colloquium. So, uh, uh, we will have another series of colloquium later. So, I will let you know the all the audience here. So, thank you. See you later. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.